little warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the crypto warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Hey guys, this is Big Square. Uh, this is announcement that Paige has posted the latest Word Wednesday on the Instagram account. So if you aren't on Instagram yet, go to Instagram, Bix Weir, all one word, and hit follow. Hit follow there. And you will click on this dollar bill, $100 bill thing right here. And it'll take you to a video of Paige and me talking about the Word Wednesday word, which is fractional reserve banking. Go check it out. She's got a cool intro with it. I'm gonna attach it to the end of this video, but make sure you go. There she is. I'm back. I'm your host, Paige Goodger, and we have Bix Weir. <laughs> there we go. Hey, go check it out. Go on Instagram and hit follow. Go on Instagram and hit follow and uh, and like and subscribe and all. Oh, I haven't liked it. Look at that. There you go. I put a like on it. Um, she's doing a great job. She's trying to take what I say and translate it into normal speak so that her generation knows what's going on. So important to understand fractional reserve banking as we inch into a banking collapse. So here, ladies and gentlemen, is my daughter Paige explaining to the world what the hell I'm talking about when we talk about fractional reserve banking. Happy Word Wednesday. Welcome back. I'm your host, Paige Goodger, and we have Bix Weir. Hi, Bix. Hi, Hi fans. <laughs> so today we are going to be talking about fractional reserve banking. And this came from a uh, follower, John H. Thank you for submitting this word for Word Wednesday, and we are very excited to get into it. So first, as always, I will define the word, and then we'll kind of go into some questions around the word, and so we can get a clear picture of how it affects all of us. My official definition of fractional reserve banking is a system in which only a fraction of bank deposits are backed by actual cash on hand and available for withdrawal. So Vix, how does fractional reserve banking work? People make deposits, and then because the bank has X amount of deposits, they can lend out 10 times X. And that's how money, most of the money in uh, the world is created. It's not by the central banks. It's not by the government. It's by the banks lending it into existence. Say if you have $100 and you deposit it in the bank, the bank doesn't really hold $10 of that in a, in a 10 to 1 fractional reserve. It doesn't hold $10 and then lend out $90 of the 100. What they do is they hold the $100 and then they create $900 from that deposit. So it's kind of the reverse of what you think's going on in fractionally reserved. They don't have the money. Henry Ford way back in the, what was it, the 20s or so said, if the people of the United States knew how their monetary system worked, they would, there would be a revolution the next morning. Because the monetary system is a debt-based system created out of thin air. So yeah. that's kind of what a fractional reserve system is. I saw a statistic that 97% of the money in our economy is created through fractional reserve lending. So this kind of ties into our system being backed by debt. And if we weren't in debt, we essentially wouldn't have any money. The money that we use right now is in IOU that the bank kind of lent out to us. Yep. So that, that's absolutely true. And as a matter of fact, it says that if you pull out a, a dollar bill, a $10 bill, right on the top, it'll say Federal Reserve note. And what is a note? It's an IOU. But then it gets to the question of, well, what do they really owe you? They owe you another one of those IOUs because we went off the gold standard in 1971 so it is, it is a debt-based system where money is lent into existence. So all money now is debt. The fight between our freedom and our liberty is on one side and total fascism and lockdown and losing all of our freedoms is on the other side. 
we need to fight for the side that has more freedom and more liberty, uh, especially when it comes to money. I agree. I agree. So are there any advantages to fractional reserve banking? People think of banks as you, you put money in the bank so you can get some interest because money doesn't earn anything unless it's in the bank. You get a little interest and the bank will give that money to someone else and they say they're doing good for the community because we can lend this money to the community to make sure they can afford to buy a house and feed their children and send their kids on a just college and, and have a loan. That's not what happens. They take that money, stick it in their vault as their reserve, and then create nine times, 10 times, 20 times the amount of money out of thin air, lending it out to everybody. And then everything implodes. And who ends up with everything? The bankers. At the end of the day, if the bankers fail, they get bailed out. If you fail, you lose everything. So heads, heads they win, tails you lose type of scenario in fractional reserve banking. So it sounds like the reasoning behind this fractional reserve banking is so if I put money into the, into the bank, it doesn't just sit there, which in theory, it sounds like a great idea. We're helping each other out. We're a community of people. But in reality, it's, it's not a simple sharing of money. It's a, it's a creation of money that, that doesn't even exist. That seems pretty criminal, if you ask me. <laughs> I mean, theoretically, that's why they need a license. You need a banking license to run that type of operation. Otherwise, it's called a Ponzi scheme. And here's the other thing. When they get caught doing a crime, when they come up, they get caught committing a crime, it's not you know the run of the mill, couple hundred bucks from stealing from 7-Eleven. These are multi-billion dollar crimes. They do not go to jail. They have a get out of jail free card because they pay a fine. As a matter of fact, in, when you work in the banking industry and you work on these big deals, you keep a reserve off to the mm -hmm. side. On every deal, you bake in a reserve, one or 2% on deals for legal fees and expenses. So they bake into the, the economics of the deal a little part of it for legal expense and what well, they don't tell you, but it's potential fraud. Over the past 20 years, JP Morgan has paid over $45 billion to the regulators in fines because of criminal activity and nobody's gone to jail. These banks are not being transparent with how they're choosing to leverage or spend or do anything with this money. So like the people do not have any power in this system. This is how big banks run our lives, essentially. And it's criminal. And I, to this day, not one of these bankers has gone to jail. If everybody goes into the bank and says, I want my money, you get a, it's a wonderful life moment where they don't have your money. And they say, oh, don't worry about it. Come back Tuesday. No, I want my money now. We don't have it. It's like your money is in his house. And your money is in their car and because it's none of this is actually real. It's not backed by anything. And so it's just everyone's money in other places. It's very criminal. <laughs> <laughs> so to recap fractional reserve lending, it is a system in which only a fraction of bank deposits are backed by actual cash on hand and available for withdrawal. And the problem with this is that banks leverage the money that we as um, depositors put in and they essentially create money out of thin air by creating loans so that other people can have money but then that puts those other people in debt so then this just perpetuates our system that is based on debt it's, it's, that's exactly it. We run, we live in a debt-based economic system with debt-based money. If you added some honesty and hard assets into the monetary system of the world, we could fix most of the problems we have out there. It's the perpetuation of that debt-based monetary system that is destroying mankind today. And when we get rid of that, it's going to be painful but we can start fresh and put our, our future on a sound foundation instead of the quicksand of debt money we have today. I just want to leave you guys with a 
um, a quote from the French philosopher Voltaire, and he said, all paper money eventually returns to its intrinsic value zero. So right now, I think we're, we're in that process of um, kind of breaking the ideology around money and cash and, you know, that people think it has value, but it really doesn't. And I hope this video kind of gave you guys a peek into why it, why the money we have in our system right now isn't real and why that money is actually just debt and why we need to wipe the slate clean in order to actually live in a system that is based on things that have actual value. Well, I hope you guys all enjoyed the second word Wednesday. And thank you, Bix, for coming on and helping explain and clarify some of these, uh, the ins and outs of fractional reserve banking. If you guys have any questions about um, anything that was said, leave them in the comments below, and I will do my best to either relay that information to Bix or respond to you um, through the research that I've done. And we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you then. Bye.